All right, so still hyped from the news yesterday about the release date and full official announcement that the entire Edric Trilogy is getting the HD2D remake treatment. I want to talk about all the changes that we know about when it comes to the HD2D remake from the previous versions of the game. Now, for those of you that don't know, Dragon Quest 3 was originally an NES game called Dragon Warrior, or in Japan it was called Dragon Quest, of course. And you play as the son of Ortega, and Ortega was like this great hero, but he failed in his mission to stop the great evil at the time. So on your 16th birthday, the king asks you to go and succeed where your father had failed to take out the great evil that is plaguing the land. So that is how your journey begins, and that's kind of the premise for the start of the game. That has not changed. But what has changed is a number of things. So starting with added voice acting. So they added a bunch of voice acting, apparently, dialogue to the game. So some of the parts, probably from the NPCs, like the kings and stuff that'll give you your missions, are gonna be voice acted, which is pretty cool, honestly. It makes sense that the main cast probably won't be. I could see the hero maybe having something to say at the end of the game or something like that, giving him a bit of a voice there. But for the most part, the main character in a Dragon Quest game is a silent protagonist, so not going to probably have a lot of voice acting out of the main character. And the rest of the cast are all created characters, so I doubt they'll be speaking voice acted lines. But who knows? You're going to be able to create your party just like any other version at the uh, party planning place. So you'll be able to create your characters and choose their job classes and all that. And we'll get into what job classes are available later on in the video. So stick around for that. If you like Dragon Quest videos, Dragon Quest news, all that stuff, please remember to like, subscribe, turn notifications all, and share this around. Helps the channel out so much. And I appreciate all you guys do for me. Now let's move on. There's gonna be cutscenes. Now, I don't know the depth of the cutscenes. We see in the trailer there's a little cutscene. I'm, I'm assuming it's when you first get your ship because it looks like your ship is departing. There's a little bit of a cutscene there. There's definitely that cutscene that was in the Super Famicom remake where the uh, Ortega fight happens, uh, where Ortega is fighting the, uh, the I don't know, monster or whatever at the beginning of the game. Uh, you can kind of see it in a flashback in the trailer that we were shown. And then, of course, it looks like you'll have that cutscene once you collect all the orbs. I don't want to say what happens. I don't want to. I don't want to ruin it for anybody. But once you collect all the orbs, it showed a little bit of that cutscene there. So that's cool. And I'm assuming we're gonna get a bit more because you can see the the ship departing and that they made it look like a bit of a cutscene there. So I think we're gonna get some more cutscenes. The PS5 version has a 4K graphics mode that lowers the frame rate a bit, but crisps up the graphics just a little bit more. For those of you that are getting it on the PS5, now, I said in my previous video that it's only going to have the memory system. And so what that is, is when you're speaking to NPCs, you're going to be able to memorize some of the phrases that they're saying. And that'll help you to figure out what you should be doing next. And I said that they're going that route instead of map markers and stuff like that. So it won't be so obvious where to go. Well, now we know that there will be map markers. So there's going to be mini maps in towns and in dungeons with objective markers. So it'll help you know where to go next. I don't know if this is toggleable. I know that the uh, the memory thing sounds like it's optional. I don't know if you can toggle on the quest indicators and stuff like that. Hopefully you can because there's a number of people who like to play it the old school way and just figure things out for themselves. Me, I don't mind either way, but it would be nice if it was toggleable. Speaking of the quest markers and stuff that is kind of copied over from Dragon Quest 10 and 11, the interface of the game looks very similar to that of Dragon Quest 11. So if you're new to the series and the only Dragon Quest game you played was Dragon Quest 11, it's going to be very familiar to you, the menuing and the interface and stuff like that. Apparently it looks exactly the same or very similar similar to Dragon Quest XI's. The personalities are here to stay, so Dragon Quest III on the NES obviously didn't have this feature, but the Super Famicom and Game Boy Color remakes both allowed you to do a personality test at the beginning of the game, and that test would determine what your personality was, and then all your creative characters all had their own personalities, and the personalities affect the character's stats and stat gains. 
So certain job classes do better with certain personalities, so on and so forth. I hope they have the vamp personality. It made playing as a female hero, that's the easiest route to go because you can get the vamp or sexy or whatever it's called personality and it has the best stat gains bar none. So if you're looking to play and, and be on easy street, you'll want to start the game as a, as, a, as a female hero and look up how to answer the questions during the questionnaire at the start so you can start with the vamp personality. But there's also going to be books and items and stuff like that that can change your personality just like in those remakes as well. So if you get a personality you don't like, don't worry. Eventually you'll be able to find something that can probably turn you into the personality type that you are looking for. Speaking of uh, items on the map and mini maps and world maps and stuff like that, the world map is going to have sparkling items so you can get loot, be it medical herbs or gold, but there's also going to be locations on the map that weren't there before and they'll look a little suspicious. You go over to them, activate them, and you can go inside, be it like a little... A little village or a little cabin in the woods or a little extra dungeon so they're going to be actually including additional story scenarios written under yuji hori's supervision so we're getting a bunch more content than any other version of the remakes as far as story content and side content so look forward to that kind of like i just recently played dragon quest plus and there's a few little areas where if you investigate that area if it looks off from the original versions of the game and you investigate it you'll end up in like a forest with extra stuff and extra characters in there and uh, or a cave or something that wasn't there in the previous versions so that's going to be cool uh, it's going to be nice for those of us especially that have already played through the game so many different times and across all the different versions to uh, be able to explore the world map and find new things that weren't there in our previous playthroughs. So that's exciting as hell. We're going to get more story, more locations, and more stuff to do. As far as battles, they've changed that up a little bit too to modernize it. So there is the option to turn on auto battle. They also, it looks like they're going to have AI tactics similar to pretty much all the Dragon Quest games since Dragon Quest 4 on the NES where you can set your party members to a certain battle type, tactic type they usually call it. So there'd be like Show No Mercy where they're willing to use any amount of MP to damage and kill the enemy as quickly as possible or focus on healing where their priority of that character will be to keep everyone's health in top shape as well as fight wisely which is kind of like they're gonna fight to the best of their abilities without wasting items without wasting mp stuff like that so there's a number of different tactical settings that you can use across all the different games and i'm assuming it's something similar to that and they're adding a memory option to the combat as well so kind of like in i think a lot of the final fantasy games had this back in the day where if you were, say, going to be casting Bang a lot or something with your Sage, instead of having to scroll down to Magic and then scroll down, finding Bang, and then selecting Bang, you'll be able to just mash the X button and it'll keep doing the last attack that you just did. It makes battle a lot quicker if you're trying to grind. Instead of having to scroll through and do all the menuing and stuff, it'll just leave your cursor where it was from the previous turn, making it just a lot quicker to use the same move over and over again if, if that's what you're wanting to do. Again, all these are optional, but uh, they're there. It also looks like it's going to have the bag, which uh, is carrying forward from the Super Famicom remake. Anyone who's played old school Dragon Quest knows how frustrating and tedious it can be when all your character's inventories are full and you're about to pick up a new item, so you're constantly having to shuffle items around. Sometimes you have to go to the bank and throw your items in the bank to make room so that your four characters have enough room to pick up this item because even like key items and stuff would still go in your regular inventory, so it would take up all that inventory space and it was an absolute inventory management nightmare at times. So now it's bringing the bag forward, so you're not going to have to worry about that. Obviously, in battle, the party members can only use the items that they have on them. You can't use items from the bag in battle. You have to be holding that item in order for that character to use that item in battle. And now finally... The main reason we're all here, there's a new job class added. So if you were closely paying attention to the latest trailer and the collector's edition loot, like my buddy Sunny D Light, you'll have noticed that they added a new job class to the game. I think this is fantastic and follows in the footsteps of the Super Famicom remake 
that first added the Thief class to the game. This time it seems to be the Monster Master class from Dragon Quests 5 through 7 and 10. Monster Master usually either recruits monsters to fight for them or can gain monster abilities to use in battle. There's a bunch of different ways they can approach this, so I'm excited to see what they do. I honestly kind of hope you can call in a monster team to fight a couple of rounds for you. It was kind of the closest thing Dragon Quest ever had to like summons that you would have in like Final Fantasy. So I hope that's the case. I doubt it because it hasn't really been the case ever other than I guess Dragon Quest VIII. But in Dragon Quest X, the Monster Master is allowed to recruit one monster and bring it with them at all times, level that monster up, gain abilities with that monster, similar to what you would have in say Dragon Quest V. So I'm interested in seeing how the Monster Master works. And the way we found that this job class was going to be in the game was there's little slivers of him showing up in the trailer. And then, of course, when they announced the collector's edition with all the different job class figure things, you can see there's one there that wasn't in the previous games, and that is the Monster Master. I'm not 100% sure it is the Monster Master, but come on, it looks exactly like the Monster Master from Dragon Quest X. So, what do you guys think? Are you guys excited to play as the Monster Master? Are you guys excited to play this game? Have you pre-ordered the collector's edition like myself? yet I mean come on you get yourself the kitty suit right off the hop with the pre-order let me know what you guys think about the monster master class let me know what you think about these changes if there's gonna be any other changes to the game and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one please remember to like subscribe turn notifications to all share this around let people know about the new job class about the changes to the game and I'll see you guys in the next one